thank you so much for joining us. Another week, another another week of lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, still going on. Yeah, still going on. I can't believe it. Some restrictions are starting to be lifted though. Um, some shops are opening, aren't they, and, and things like that. And um, some churches are now allowed to reopen. So St Augustine's is looking at reopening very, very soon for just a few hours during the week for private prayer. Keep an eye on our social media and our website um, and we'll announce it as soon as we know for sure when we'll be reopening. Um, and there'll be lots and lots of safety precautions in place to make sure that you're as best protected as you can be. Um, but we'd love to see you for private prayer when we're open. Absolutely. So, shall we dive into yeah. the scriptures this morning? We are still in the book of Acts, the story of the early church. And today we're reading from chapter 15 and verses 1 to 11. So do follow along at home. Some men came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and a debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and as they travelled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the brothers very glad. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders, to whom they reported everything that God had done through them. Then some of the believers, who belonged to the party of the Pharisees, stood up and said, The Gentiles must be circumcised and required to obey the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. He made no distinction between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the disciples a yoke that neither we nor our fathers have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved, just as they are. So it's retelling the story of um, of a debate that was going on in the early church, or pr probably a, a fairly fierce debate mm. about basically what you had to do to be part of the community that Jesus started, to be part of the church, to be part of those who were assured of their of their salvation. And there were some different ideas about what that meant floating around, weren't there? Yeah, and that, um, as we hear right in the beginning of that reading, that kind of started from the Jewish custom was to circumcise um, their children. I think it was eight days after they were born was the custom. And, um, or maybe it wasn't, I can't remember. Um, but that started way, way back in the Old Testament where God says to, um, to his people, um, this is, this is going to be a covenant. This is how you're going to know that you are, you are mine, you belong to me, that you're my people, through this, this circumcision covenant that, mm. that I'm making with you. So this is what's been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years with the Jewish people. Yeah. And a covenant is um, kind of a churchy word, isn't it? It's, it means like this like really firm agreement, a total commitment, doesn't it, to... One person. It's not like a contract where if you do X, I'll do Y. Yeah. It's so much more than that, isn't it? And and that's that's what was going on with with the covenant of circumcision. But then, of course, when Jesus came along, he said he's he's not getting rid of the law, is he? He said he's not taking a letter away from it, but but he fulfilled it, and that meant that the way that we can live post Jesus, um, is a little bit different. And of course, when, when Jesus was um, sharing the Last Supper, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, didn't he? And that means he started this, this, new, this new agreement, this new relationship, this new covenant. Um, and of course, that can include Gentiles, people that aren't from a Jewish background. 
which we already heard last week, and Peter refers to it here, where he had that vision mm. um, and went to Cornelius's house um, and started preaching to the Gentiles there. So he's talking about that, and when he says, um, God made a choice that, that the Gentiles would hear from my lips the message of the gospel. That's what I think that's what he's referring to mm. there, isn't it? But, it, you know, having lived in a certain way for so many years with that being the done thing, it's, you know... We talk about the church not liking change nowadays, but how hard it, is it to kind of break old habits and break old ideas mm. um, when they've been practiced for so long, and there's a new a new idea, a new way of living put in put in the ring. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I guess it's I guess one of the the key points that Peter's making when he stands up and reports back what the the apostles and the elders have have sensed is God's way in this is that it's not what we do that saves us it's not that act of being circumcised that brings you salvation or anything like that but but it is by the grace of God and nothing else that we are saved and he says right he says right at the end of his speech isn't he that he made gods, this is, no, he made no distinction between us and them, the Jews and the Gentiles, for he purified their hearts by faith. We know that's a key thing that Jesus mm -hmm. asks of us, isn't it, to place our faith in him. Um, and then it says, now then, why do you try and test them by putting on their necks of the disciples a yoke that neither we nor our fathers could bear? And that's talking about keeping the law of the Old Testament, isn't it, which nobody except Jesus did perfectly. And then he finally says, we believe that it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that, that loving choice, that we are saved. Yeah, and then often a, a sign of that is baptism, isn't it? Mm. And that's how people kind of say, de declare their faith publicly and give thanks to God for that grace um, in the act of baptism. Yeah, yeah it's kind of... In the same way that to to be part of the Jewish community, or as a man at least, circumcision is, is what you do, what demonstrates that. Baptism's a bit like that for, mm. for us now, isn't it? That's, that's sure, if you haven't been baptised, come along to church, put your faith in Jesus. But at some point, being baptised is being obedient to Jesus. And it says, it says I, I'm part of this, doesn't it? I'm... I'm one of the baptised people that belong to Jesus. Yeah, being brought into the into the church. Mm. Oh, there's a lot to go through there, wasn't there? Yeah. Shall we? Good stuff. Shall we pray together? Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your grace. Thank you that we're not. We're not saved by anything that we do. We're not left on our own to, to work for our salvation. But you, in your love, give it to us as a gift. Lord, would you help us to respond to that by placing our faith in you. And Lord, if for those of us who have been baptised, we thank you for for that powerful sign, for that moment, that, that sacrament that shows that we are part of your community. And for those of us who haven't, Lord, would you speak to us about that? Would you, would you speak to us if you're calling us to be baptised? We pray for all those who are desperate to be baptised, who are waiting to be baptised but can't at the moment mm. because of all of the restrictions in place. Lord, would you hold them close and would you bring them to baptism in your own perfect timing? And we pray for all the churches that are getting ready to open up this week. I pray that um, they'll be filled with wisdom. The people who have to make these decisions will, will know what the right thing for their church is. We pray for your protection around all of the church buildings and all of the people coming in to pray. And we give you thanks that we can finally start opening again. In Jesus' name, Amen.
can't wait for when we're when we're uh, able back to, to normal. back. Well, whatever if, normal. Yeah, looks well, like. whatever normal <laughs> looks like. But when we can get everyone yeah. together in in one place and celebrate some baptisms. Feels together. like a long time since that happened, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. The The fun is not over. Um, we have a pub quiz tonight yes. at 7 o'clock. The Zoom room will be open at 6.45. Um, you can find the details for that on our social media or just pop us a quick message. Um, we'll send that over to you as well. It should be really fun. Yeah, it's going to be really great. Colin and Kathy, our quiz masters, always put on a wonderful yes. evening. So why not, why not bring a friend, bring the whole household on one Zoom call, um, make a really great evening yeah. of it. Yeah. Stay safe. God bless. Bye. Bye.